Ahoy there, me hearties. This be Captain Silver Hook, and you're listening to the Two Old Pirates podcast. Set sail for an open sea of stories, tales, and some really crazy stuff. I expect you to like and subscribe, lest you be walking the plank. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Podcast 78 of the Two Old Pirates. In today's episode, we're going to jump back into some of the true crime that we've done. Uh, this is dealing with a, uh, a crime story in a neighboring town. The neighboring town is Ingleside. I actually teach there. Um, so, this is a story of Mark Crawford, the murderous mayor of Ingleside. Uh, a man named Mark Crawford, who had been born up in the East Coast, uh, done time in the United States Army, found his way to the small town of Ingleside, Texas in the 1980s. Uh, he was a welder, worked very, very hard from everything I've ever heard and read about him. And in 1988, at a very young age, in his early 30s, he decided, I'm going to run for mayor. And to everyone's astonishment, he won. Um, he taught Sunday school. Everybody seemed to really, really like the guy. He was really, really down to earth. He helped a lot of people. And so he uh, was the mayor at the young age of 33. He began a construction business while he was mayor, but it kind of fizzled out and didn't do very well. And then he started a secondary business, and it seemed to take off. And he was doing so, so well. And people in the town were noticing, uh, you know, he dressed a little bit better, uh, he uh, began buying expensive things. He, uh, he bought uh, some fancy cars, a Jaguar, Mercedes, bought a boat, bought a beach house, opened up more businesses, and it just seemed like everything that he touched, he had the Midas touch, everything he t had touched to gold. Uh, a lot of people were happy for him. There were some people that did question, uh, all of a sudden jumped to such great, great heights. Uh, in 1990, he ran again to win re-election, and he won again. A lot of the people in Ingleside really liked him. In 1992, he decided to leave the mayor's office, and he decided to run for a bigger seat. He wanted to be in the Texas State Senate up in Austin. He ran in 1992, but was unsuccessful. And he kind of moved away from that. He retreated back to his businesses. And he continued to lead a seemingly charmed life. Everybody still really looked up to him. He still had his doubters, but he was still a very, very popular person. Um, he started a new insurance company uh, that reached out from all the way from California all the way to, I believe, Mississippi and Missouri, uh, Louisiana. It had a lot of different states combined. And things just continued to grow. Money seemed to be pouring in. People were like, man, this guy... Like I said, at the Midas touch. In the 1990s, the IRS started snooping around and they started asking questions. They started an investigation of his businesses for fraud, embezzlement, different things like that. Um, so some of the people that had questioned him were of the sound mind of, hey, we told you anything too good to be true. Um, and they investigated him for tax fraud, things like that. There was a business partner in one of his businesses uh, that sat down uh, and interviewed with the IRS and the federal agents uh, and evidently was disclosing some of the business deals. He voluntarily went to them. Uh, by the time an indictment was filed, that partner who had talked was missing. This is in May of 1996. Uh, in June of 1996, June 1st of 1996, one of the two bodyguards that uh, the ex-mayor, Mark Crawford, had hired went to the Rockport Police Department, my hometown, with a wild story of uh, all these different business dealings and uh, uh, a death, a murder. Um, he said he and another bodyguard had helped the ex-mayor to kill this business associate that had been talking to the IRS and federal agents. He even led them to a body 
and a shallow grave. So it wasn't so cuckoo after all. There was a body. He told them that they had uh, forced the man at gunpoint into a metal toolbox. And then they backed up a Ford Explorer and tied a hose into a small hole in the metal box and revved the engine for a good 15 minutes to pump all that carbon monoxide into it. Um, and then they let it just sit there for a little bit. After about 15, 20 minutes, they opened up the metal box and this man was dead. Authorities then decided, let's go find Mark Crawford. This was at one of Mark Crawford's personal buildings. So to find the metal box, dead body, things started adding up. So the police and authorities started looking for Mark Crawford and Mark Crawford was gone. Uh, he was nowhere to be found. It took them six weeks, but he's finally found in Mississippi. He was hiding out in Mississippi. So they brought him back to go ahead and face trial. That was in 1996. He faced his first trial right there in Aransas County where Rockport is. Both bodyguards uh, took the witness stand. Um, after getting a plea deal, they basically took the witness stand and uh, explained what happened that evening and why they were part of this. Um, the jury was deadlocked. Ten for guilty, two for not guilty. And so therefore they could not make an agreement. They could not come to uh, an agreement. So therefore they were told that it would be a hung jury. The state called for a new trial saying we have to try this again. And they said, we'll go ahead and move this up. To, we'll go ahead and move this up to San Antonio and Bear County. And they did the same thing. The jury this time did not really believe the two bodyguards as much. So Crawford was found not guilty. He was found not guilty of murder. I would think that a sigh of relief would happen. But during this entire trial period between Aransas County and Bear County, getting everything together. This was not like in a couple days, this took quite a while. During that time period, the federal government though, they were investigating. And what happened was, uh, they went ahead and charged him with a slew of charges. I mean, so many, fraud, embezzlement, um, tampering with a witness, murder of a witness, I mean, all these other things. And so what happened is, they charged him not with a local state murder, they charged him with a federal murder of a person who had come to talk to federal agents with the IRS. So that's how they got to charge him for a second time for the same murder. Um, the, it was moved to Fresno, California. One of the fraud charges was from a company embezzled, embezzling funds out of a company that he was partially associated with out of Fresno, California. All three men were charged. Uh, with the murder and embezzlement and fraud, things like that. But Crawford was the big one. That's the one that they wanted to get. It only took a week. One week and the jury came back guilty on all charges, all accounts. And the big one was the murder charge. M murder of a federal uh, informant, federal witness. Uh, Mark Crawford, the one-time uh, shining star of Ingleside, Texas, two-time elected mayor, um, seemed to have everything going for him, was found guilty by a, a jury in Fresno, California, and that was in 1999, and uh, his sentence, life in prison, no chance of parole, ever. He has fought this over the years, and each time he's come up short, and he has been in custody since they found him in Mississippi, since 1966. So if you do the math, that is, uh, what, 27 years? 27 years that he's been um, behind bars. And to this day, he still claims his uh, freedom. I believe he's written several books. And there are still defenders of Mark Crawford saying this was all a setup. Um, I don't know if we'll ever know. But as of right now, he's still behind bars. And he's still fighting uh, to be free. Some say... He was a dirty businessman and would do whatever it took. Others say he was a gentleman and a nice guy and they got it all wrong. But that's the story of Mark Crawford, the ex-mayor of Ingleside, Texas.
I hope that you've enjoyed this short episode, and I hope that you'll like, you'll share, and you'll respond. You'll comment. If there's something else that you'd like to know, if there's any other true crime that you'd like me to look into from our area, let me know and I'll look into it. But for the Jewel Pirates, this is Eric. Thank you for watching podcast episode number 78. I hope the best to all of you. I love you. Peace.